When did the sex addiction start? It started when I was eight, nine. I could spend hours and hours and hours just, just fantasizing about women's body parts. One fantasy I used to have as a kid was that I was uh, undressing a woman's shirt, and underneath that shirt was, was another shirt, then another shirt. The hunt is more intoxicating sometimes than the actual uh, uh, getting the prize, having the orgasm. I think I used my God-given sexual energy to self-medicate. But uh, what were you medicating? The uh, grief about the loss of my, my uncle, loss of my uh, grandfather, who, who I was close to, loss of my uh, loss of my father. The shame that, that I internalized that, like, like, why does my mother not want to spend time with me, you know? I must be a bad person. My mother had poor boundaries around clothing in, in, in the house. She'd walk around in, uh, in a t-shirt and panties, mm -hmm. you know, no bra on. It charged me. My sexuality was so contained, you know, and I was so isolated with it. And then when, when I had the, the opportunity to become sexually active, to like what I fantasized about, and then when that opened up, you know, I, I hit it full force. When do you think was the depths of your problem? I would say in my early 20s, everything that was important to me uh, just stopped becoming, the, the sex became more important. I had to drop out of school. I, uh, I had a great job. I couldn't see how I was just destroying myself. The folks who I would get involved with were, were either, uh, they were unavailable because they were, they were way older, they were, they were married, or, uh, or they just wanted to have sex. Did you, know? you seek out people who were unavailable? I think unconsciously I did. That made the sex that much more exciting, you know? Kind of, it made, made it more taboo. And what kind of, of behaviors did you do that, were, that are considered taboo? Seducing a married person, you know? Uh, seducing a, uh, a, uh, a person who I'm on a job interview with. At the moment, did you ever just say to yourself, why am I doing this? Honestly, it didn't matter what I said to myself because I always like, got back in the same. It's like that magnet. You only get so far, then vroom. My addiction was so enmeshed with, with early childhood trauma that it was so tied in together and to snap out of it and then dealing with, with a lot of pain. When you look at any addict, that's what you're up against. Once I admitted that I can't control this, and then I, I think that's when I, in fact, that's when I started, that's when I started to change. I specifically remember uh, a, a night in, in March of 2001, I felt like a tractor beam pulling me towards the phone to like call a specific person to, to hook up and have sex. I had this spiritual moment where the, the pull was still happening, but it was just coming through me. You know, like a like, like picture like a, a sail and the wind just just and the, the wind was like a, a screen and the wind was just blowing through it. And and how did that happen? How did you do that? By the grace of God, you know, by showing up to showing up to uh, meetings, like like talking to people. I committed to celibacy, you know, and I I, w I had a year of no masturbation, no sex, no nothing. How old were you at that point? I was thirty. You know? You're thirty. Right. And so that was right before you you met the person who would eventually be your wife. Yeah. Had you not had that moment, could you possibly have met her and gone on to have a healthy relationship? God, no. And how much did you tell her? I, you know, honestly, I told her right off the bat on my second, I think, second or third date, you know, because honestly, like this, my recovery come, came first in my, my, my life. And, and, and if no woman or no person that I was going to be that close to didn't get it, it wasn't the person for me. So how's your sex life? It's, um, it's, a, it's a struggle. Healthy sexuality is a, I think for sex addicts, no pun intended, it's a tough nut to crack. My wife is very patient. She's very understanding and, and, and we, we've had couples therapy and, and work through some of these issues. A fantasy might come up, you know. Uh, during sex with your wife? No, during sex. I might just be, be laying down in bed, getting ready to go to bed. So say I will look at the clock. Or I, or I look at the blinds, that's another trick. I use. I always find like the brightest thing in the room. So and even now, you've been through all the therapy, even now there are times we're lying down. It's so easy to rationalize you know, a sexual fantasy. You know, who doesn't? It's so why is it bad now to have a sexual fantasy? It's a fuse to a, uh, to a, to a de de destructive behavior of mine.